Hi Capricorn, here is a general look at your solar chart for February 2016 and uh, it looks like uh, quite a sociable kind of vibe going on uh, for you and also it's, it's quite progressive as well. Uh, anyway, until the 19th, you finances or property matters or things going on in the space or the budget or the incomings and outgoings or how you've got things arranged uh, in practical material ways may be more of a theme and uh, maybe you're trying to get rid of stuff maybe you're trying to get your hands on more maybe you're trying to move it around whatever it is but Mercury and Venus are in your sign and Mars is in a very very long transit uh, in a very future orientated part of your chart so more on on that in a minute so uh, first of all, Mercury putting you very much in that kind of mindset of, of, uh, of uh, information exchange, um, uh, gathering information, but also disseminating it, giving it out, um, getting into debates, conversations, uh, being maybe more gregarious, uh, a little bit more gregarious in whatever way, whether that is through speaking, writing or another sort of a way and your mental processes are likely to be really getting charged up, you know, and um, then Venus is there as well, which is, uh, these are these two are, are always reaching out to others and uh, puts you in a more sociable mood, more inclined to reach out, meeting the world with more ease and enthusiasm, enthusiasm but also um, maybe finding that there's a resource there uh, or, or a platform or something that you can um, capitalize upon in some way. Uh, also feeling as though you, 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 your team, you've got some support. You know, you've got somebody on your side. You, you feel as though you're teamed up with somebody. There's this little sharing feeling going on here. So it might be one other person, might be several other people. And uh, this is generally gives a boost to friendships, love relationships of all kinds, and you mixing and mingling and generally uh, feeling more appreciation or even admiration coming in your direction. That's altogether likely. So if you if you, you are, are after something or to raise funds or to, to get that job or to just um, be persuasive, then this is a good time to be doing it whilst Mercury and Venus are in your sign and uh, work it to your advantage. And then both of them move within three days of each other to the next sector and the next sector is a practical sector. It's to do with finances and property. It's the same sector as the Sun was in that I spoke about in the beginning. And then they, all together, all three of them, the Sun, Mercury and uh, Venus are here, really putting a lot of emphasis on that practical how-to, not so much uh, the, the, the sense of ideas um, and uh, the sense of kind of uh, the 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 the, um, the concepts uh, but it's okay how do we walk this talk how how do we apply this how do we put this together um, how do we improve things with the finances talking about it talking to people who know about it um, having conversations or maybe it's not that maybe it's about certain re certain um, material objects that you're having conversations about or thinking about um, uh, desirable sorts of resources but again with Venus there as the kind of winger on this um, or indeed depending on your natal chart she might be the one in the center and Mercury is the winger in fact Mercury is much more suitable to being a winger having wings on its on his ankles and his and his hat um, <clears throat> So, but overall, you can do okay financially. Uh, you can do okay when you are in negotiations type situations. Um, you can, things can go in your favor more uh, in those sorts of material ways. And uh, buying, selling, renting, leasing, this comes under this, but also, as I say, figuring out what resources you've got at your disposal. Now, these are, might be things you were born with. They might be your innate gifts that you need to sharpen up into 
marketable skills. It might be something like that. It could very much be something like that. With Mars, where Mars is for such a long time, it, it could very well be. Um, so in general, Venus tends to ease things materially um, uh, and also people can be appreciative towards you for what you, for, for your skill, for your talent, for your experience. Um, you get a good reception for that. Um, and as I say, it could be lucrative as well. The only thing about Venus there is sometimes it can mean that we get a little bit we get a little bit less careful um, with our own finances and uh, we find ourselves being a bit skittish and getting, you know, maybe uh, thinking we need certain things that perhaps maybe we don't really. Um, however, that, you know, that said, it still can pull uh, good things in the pipeline towards you. Now, the, the transit of Mars is an exceptional one this year. Um, between now and September, Mars is in a, is going to hop between Sag, uh, Scorpio and Sagittarius. So at the moment, when Mars is in Scorpio, that's making really good waves across into your sign. When it's in Sagittarius, it's it's okay. It's just it's just quieter. Um, but it depends on what planets you've got where, of course. But just on the level of the sun, um, it, it, that's what it looks like. So Mars at the moment is in a very progressive area of your solar chart. It means that you should be feeling as though you are getting some uh, some lift on some lift off sort of energy, which is which is helping you to go towards things that maybe you left way back in your life because you couldn't get to it then or, or it, you, you know things got in the way you, you couldn't afford it whatever it was um you will get this uh, feeling that now you can get on with certain things that you were unable to before which were denied to you before this is also a technological area it's an area to do with the internet it's an area to do with networking so some of you may find this is the way that Mars is expressing through this house here it's also to do with finding a group of kindred spirits or or, or, or getting into a group of others with an interest in mind with certain interests in, in, in common and looking to you for a lead um, in some way so just uh, don't be hasty and let others tie you up because wherever Mars goes, whichever sort of um, area Mars is expressing himself through, he's all kind of driven, you know, he's really driven and he doesn't really have an off switch. So just be careful about that and get him under control and, you know, use your own off switch. Uh, it can be more technological. You may have to get your head around more technological type stuff and figure out how to do it but it's definitely time to get the ball rolling on something uh, Capricorn now Mars is in there until early March comes out and goes on into the sign before you were Sagittarius and then comes back in very late May to, to spend another long stint in that area there so I'll come back to that when I'm doing the monthlies now the Sun moves on the 19th so all three of them together in that practical area of um, <clears throat> the nuts and bolts of things and then the Sun leaves Mercury and Venus behind and moves on into the next area which is very communications orientated meeting greeting so it's it's still very much with that vibe and uh, you could be again you know figuring out, out how to do things by the information that you're getting um, uh, and probably um, you could even be more in like that sort of mode of, of, of there's lots of chit chat going on um, maybe or it could be more paperwork or it could be just you um, thinking a lot more about things and being more receptive to what's going on you know feedback etc or you're the one giving the feedback uh, it's a great one there um, where Mars is actually and this one where the Sun is relatively briefly it's, it's it's great it puts you on a bit of a learning curve it can do anyway now Saturn is in the sign before your Saturn is your ruling planet it's in Sagittarius it's coming into your sign at, at the end of 2017 so now is the time to tie up loose ends from the past 
uh, face up to a few home truths maybe and um, beaver away sort of busily behind the scenes on this or that or the other thing. Uh, during this transit you could be called upon to give more support to others or another but also during this time you could find that others are bringing more support towards you and uh, that's always a nice feeling but there will be moments when maybe uh, others won't fully grasp how much you're doing for them on their behalf, on their behalf. Um, but does it really matter if you're getting that message across or if you're putting that thing in place? I don't know. It depends on where you're at, really. Um, but you're putting maybe more into things than others fully appreciate. Now, you or, or really, I would say as well, m mind out for being a bit of a martyr, you know, kind of being the one that holds everything up from the bottom, from, you know, uh, and letting others... T be in the glory <laughs> uh, unless of course that's your choice that should if that's your choice that's absolutely fine but I think more balancing uh, would be a good idea now there could be some things that you come up against to do with your deep emotional patterns as well with Saturn here that you've really got to sort of go do you know what I keep doing that and I keep falling down that same old hole in the road I'm going to put an end to this now um, and uh, gradually wherever Saturn goes is gradual you will do what you set your mind to do, okay? So Capricorn's born the 3rd to the 7th of January, or with 13 to 17 degrees rising, you're going to feel this one the most at the moment. Jupiter will be working happily out of his own house in your solar chart, that's the ninth house, and you'll have the opportunity to push the envelope of life uh, 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 mentally and physically, um, explore, adventure, and um, physically in the world, like I say, but also maybe mentally through education, through, uh, again, I'll mention writing, speaking, and uh, in general using whatever other method of communication you can find to get across your point or indeed to source uh, the points of others and um, then distill the essence from it. So growth is very much here. Uh, uh, did I say more travel? I meant to say more travel is likely, um, but e even if you can't go long distance, you should try to find places that you can, um, you know, th th that are unfamiliar or sign up for something unfamiliar as well. It's a great vibration for broadcasting things, beating the drum on things um, and um, reaching into new fields of endeavour. Capricorn's born the 8th to the 13th of January or with 18 to 23 degrees rising to feel this energy the most. Now Uranus, which is uh, a long-term transit starting from 2012 at the root of your chart, Capricorn, is um, quite a volatile energy and it will stir up things to do with the past, to do with family, to do with your place on the map, to do with property. So there could be this feeling of kind of chopping and changing a bit um, or of the boat rocking. But if you can bring new things into the home, if you really you don't want to stay settled where you are, um, uh, and 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 bring bring that that uh, vibration of change and and the unknown and the unconventional into your home or into the neighborhood of the community um, or, or go to those sorts of areas where that might be unconventional and 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 even gives you revelatory you know um something that you hadn't really understood or appreciated before then um then that energy won't focus so much on maybe pulling the rug out from under you because it's always better to be the one who chooses with some of these sort of major uh trances that are at a hard angle to your son so if you can bring in that spirit of, of change and excitement and of, of, of a kind of um, um, almost like the unknown into the home base or uh, have access to a place like that from the home base, uh, then that would be a good thing. Now, Uranus rules groups as well, so maybe, you know, um, you get uh, connected in with a group either th from home, like I'm doing here, or indeed, you know, not too far away, and it could be working in other ways as well. Uh, look it up, Uranus in the fourth house, look it up, Cap 
Cafe Astrology, I think, is a good one. And you Capricorns born the 6th to the 9th of January, always 16 to 19 degrees rising, you're going to feel that energy the most. And then Pluto, of course, you have Pluto in your sign, Capricorn. And uh, this is doing a major makeover job on what you thought your identity was. It's ba basically pulling off, pulling off, pulling pulling off the, the, the layers and each time you think you've got to your bottom line then there's another one. So, um, and it does this in all sorts of sneaky ways, um, but if you have been going through this uh, then you'll understand how it can be very very subtle um, and it works on the emotional body as well. So you have to look after yourself emotionally because you'll be feeling more sensitive, a lot more sensitive. Uh, what is what is small for somebody else will be huge for you, but just try to remind yourself it's because you're being Plutoed, as somebody I know says, and um, that you know you haven't got things in your normal perspective. But this is a necessary part of the journey down into the underworld of of yourself, uh, so that you can come up renewed in in this re. This, uh, is, it really is about rebirth. Are you Capricorns born the 4th to the 8th of January or with 15 to 18 degrees rising going to feel that energy the most? And then just in at the end, um, Saturn to Uranus. This is a great one. This is a wonderful transit. So uh, that's why I said about bringing in the, the new into the home, because if you are working steadily on something which is very different for you, maybe from the home base or not too far away to do with to do with the neighborhood of the community and you're working steadily Saturn consistently Saturn on that unusual for you unconventional unorthodox for you sort sort of aspiration or project then it can really pay off you know it's it's something of the wizard this one so um just be aware of that and uh you might have to wrestle with, with technology a little bit, uh, maybe, but you can overcome circumstances. This is a very positive uh, transit. And um, just another one here, Mercury and Venus going over Pluto at the very beginning of February um, might mean that conversations take, uh, take a, should we say, um, the, the weightier conversations. Not necessarily heavy, so weightier isn't quite, but deeper. Uh, on, on, on a deeper level, more insightful, uh, uh, more to do with, um, you know, reading between the lines of things, almost like intuitively, um, those sorts of conversations where maybe uh, what's behind something gets, you know, cards on the table about that. So that might be through you or to you, or it could be both. Yeah, that's that's at the beginning of February. Anyway, that's it for um, February. And if you know your rising sign or your moon sign, listen to those. And also um, there's two videos out, uh, the astrological overview for 2016 and the overview for 2016 uh, put out on the Internet um, about a week ago now. And um, uh, and this material is on dianagarland.com if you want to read it. And I'll see you the next time.